Solid Studio is a go-to brand for e-mobility companies. Just give us a call or write. Hello, uh, this is Pavel. I'm from Solid Studio and today I'd like to cover the topic of the digital products in the e-mobility ecosystem to build a basic understanding of what's doing what and what are the responsibilities. Okay, so let's start just first of all, uh, Solid Studio is a software development company that's providing the tools and services in the e-mobility world. And I covered this, this, this slide many, many times before for all of our partners to basically be on the same page, uh, both regarding the vocabulary, which products are what and what they are doing in this ecosystem. Uh, so today I do not have a major, major presentation in front of me. Uh, instead, I'm going to take you through this very basic slide. But I hope that after this brief session, you will have a little bit more, more understanding of how different actors are communicating with each other in this ecosystem. Also, please one disclaimer, today I'm not going to take you to more advanced subjects like, for instance, e-roaming hubs. I'm going to present you two basic digital products that you can build on your own, build with the software provider or buy of the shell solution, either on the SaaS or license basis. We'll cover roaming a little bit but more like peer-to-peer -peer for the sake of, of linking uh, those products together okay let's start so what i'd like to do is to start with the end user perspective so what's actually happening is that the ev driver needs to have the possibility to search for the charging station so we are in the top right corner of this diagram and we've got our ev driver that in this case is having the mobile application. So of course we'll cover different scenarios in the second as well, but let's start with this one. And as our user is holding their phone with the EMSP application in place and the EMSP or EMP is the e-mobility service provider application, in those, this kind of applications, usually you can uh, log in, register, find charging stations, see the tariffs, navigate to them, and basically start charging. So, and here's the first player. So this is the company or organization that's acting as the EMSP. And what I briefly covered are the functionalities that every EMSP should be able to offer. And as you can see, the EMSP is actually the party that takes care of the customers. So EMSP should know how to set pricing and present it to the EV drivers, how to do the marketing, how to manage subscriptions, and how to make their users to reuse their app again. So this is very basic differentiation, but I believe this is the best, that the EMSP, uh, in this case, EMSP application is responsible for handling EV drivers and is focused on the mostly B to C market. And of course, I mentioned before that uh, EV drivers should be able to search for the stations in the EMSP site, but as the EMSP doesn't really know them at this place yet, there needs to be a second player. And the second player is the charge point operator. The charge point operator needs to use the software to manage their charging network. And in very, very essence, the charge point operator is an organization or a company that is managing their stations. That's it. That's the main fundamental differentiation between the EMSP and the CPO. How they communicate, we'll cover it in a second. But currently, let's go back to our EV driver. So EV driver was able to search the station that they want to charge. So what happens is that they go with their EV there and plug the car. We are here. We need to realize that suddenly we change the concept, right? So if we keep this difference in mind that EMSP is covering the user interactions and CPO is covering everything that goes with the charger, uh, here we've got the link. So now we need to ask ourselves the questions, how does it happen that those two parties, they understand each other and know what to display? 
this is where the OCPI protocol comes comes in place. And maybe let's let's take a pause here because you can see many different products that actually uh, mix those two digital products into one. Of course, this is all possible here in Soul Studio. We believe that. Uh, clear separation of the duties and responsibilities is a very, very important factor when it comes to building digital products. And in our solutions, you can find a very clear differentiation. It also allows you to actually buy uh, or build uh, one of those products without necessity to having both. But of course, there is a challenge how to make them talk to each other. Uh, the custom uh, API is always the option. And of course, this is not the best one because even though uh, it can work in your internal ecosystem, uh, we need to remember that there are multiple players in the market. And if you've got the custom API, either on the EMSP side or on the CPO side, everybody that like to connect to you or uh, will be uh, required to actually fulfill your contract. And if there's going to be 10 different parties that like to connect to you, basically they need to do the same work 10 times. That's why the open standards has been invented. And that's why we basically structure all our domain model on the OCPI. And of course, if you've got two products, the CPO and the MSP, and they can see, they can be seen from the very high perspective as the one digital entity under the hood, those are two separated products that talk to each other over the OCPI. And this is where the magic happens. So even though the CPO is in charge of managing the stations, it pushes all the locations with all the data to all different EMSPs that are linked to it because OCPI connection, the peer-to-peer -peer connection is a man-to-many -man relationship. Of course, you can have one partner, you can have multiple, and their partners can have other CPOs uh, connected to them. So this is this is what happens. So CPO knows which charging stations they are operating and are pushing their locations to the EMSP application. EMSP, uh, of course, got, got the backend. So on the server side, everything is computed and is pushed, in our case, through the REST API uh, to the uh, EV driver. EV driver is able to start the charging by pressing the button. Of course, there are two basic ways how to start the charging. First one is the remote start stop, which is ultimately pressing the button on the mobile application. And the second one is the RFID. Let's focus on the remote start stop first. When the EV driver presses the remote start stop, under the hood, the mobile application, which is the client, so it can be the iOS or the Android app, calls over the REST API, the MSP server side. This, uh, this server knows uh, which CPO pushed the data with given charging station. And over the OCPI and OCPI connectivity, it calls the charging platform to start the charging. And here we are getting into another open standard that we need to talk about. So it's OCPP. OCPP, this is the open standard that allows charge point operators to talk to different stations. We can imagine the situation that each of the manufacturers has got their own proprietary protocol. In this case, the development of the CPU platform would be, would be enormous because we've got hundreds of different devices providers and those would be a hundred different standards. Plus, they would have to invent it from their uh, hardware perspective. So OCPP actually allows different uh, charging stations manufacturers to implement it on the hardware side and CPO platforms can implement it on the software side. And thanks to that, we as the uh, charge point operator are allowed to actually use multiple manufacturers of the charging stations. So as mentioned before, we've got the OCPP uh, connection between the uh, charge point operator platform and the station. In our case, we are using web sockets to actually keep this connection open. And CPO platform is able to tell the charger to start the charge. And the circle is closed. The EV driver successfully uh, started the charging. And from now on, the charging station will report
report to the chart point operator platform about the current charging session, for instance, the current power or how much energy has been consumed. The charge point operator will push this information to the EMSP and EMSP will display those information to our EV driver. This is how it looks from the EV driver perspective. But of course, we've got, let's say, more business or admin side of things. And both EMSP and CPO should expose the admin portal. And as mentioned before, the main duty of the EMSP is actually serving the EV driver. So in the EMSP admin portal, you have to have possibilities such as setting up the tariffs for the EV drivers or managing the RFIDs because RFIDs needs to be linked with the driver. So we need to know which account to charge. On the other hand, in the CPO admin portal, you need to have possibility to manage your charging station. So add a new charging station, remove or, or make it unavailable, change the tariffs, but for B2B purposes, manage other admins, uh, manage OCPI connections and many, many more. And one of the things that I've mentioned are the tariffs. And I think everything that we discussed so far is, is crucial to understand how the tariffs should work in the e-mobility ecosystem. Because both EMSP admin portal admin and CPO admin portal user are setting up their tariffs. But what is important that CPO tariffs are B2B tariffs. So for all CDR, so, so the charging events that has been completed on their stations under their management, the tariff will apply to them, but only for the EMSPs connected. So those are gonna be B2B money transfers, and those do not necessarily has to be the same tariffs that the end user, the, the driver is paying. So EMSP admin can set up the tariff, for instance, on the basis of adding the margin. In the simple case, if one kilowatt hour costs one euro on the B2B level, then the admin portal can add 50% margin. So the end user will pay 1.5 euro per each kilowatt hour consumed. All the money goes to the EMSP, but then depending on the settlement between those two parties, the one euro will go back to the charge point operator. So this is how it looks. And of course, adding the margin is uh, just one possibility. Uh, we can imagine that the EMSP admins got some kind of loyalty scheme for the users that for instance, at the every 10th charging is for free. Nevertheless, this EMSP will have to settle the bill with the CPO. And you can also ask the question, what if you want to be both? Or of course, we can see all different players on the market and some of them are both CPOs and EMSPs. So in this case, in let's say using this ecosystem, the tariffs can be set on the CPO side. And for instance, EMSP can add zero margin just to keep it transparent. So all the profits are in the CPO or vice versa. So the CPO admin can set up the tariffs for uh, zero and all the billings is done by the EMSP. Okay, so I think this is covering the digital ecosystem from the very high, high uh, level. We need to remember that I just talked about, let's say closed ecosystem. There is possibility to link different EMSPs to different CPOs over peer-to-peer -peer OCPI connectivity. But we need to remember that there are other ways like for instance, hub integrations, like for instance, hub integration. Okay, that's it. So if you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Please find the link to this slide in the description if you wish to study it a little bit more. And that's it for today. Thanks a lot. Solid Studio is a go-to brand for e-mobility companies. Just give us a call or write.